win the championship. <laughs> That's the best thing to do to keep your fans engaged. Hi, welcome to Beyond the Field, a show where I take you off the sports field and into your favorite teams and events. I'm your host Nadim Sheikh, and I will be talking to industry professionals like me and provide you guys. a 360 degree view of the thriving sports industry of india today i have with me mr kailash khanpal ceo of pune di palter the team that won the pro kabaddi league this season welcome kailash sir thank you thank you for having me uh, sir we'll uh, stay in touch uh, with the pkl season i want you to touch upon how was the experience of winning the league and how was it celebrating so it gave us a new high okay uh we've been uh, reaching uh, the playoffs quite consistently uh last season we reached the finals but unfortunately we couldn't uh, win the trophy but this season right at the beginning just before the auction we were very clear that if we are going in we are going in to lift the uh, trophy and come back as champions and that's what we have achieved great and how did you celebrate so uh we were dancing on the mat which i think most of us saw but after that we had a road show in pune uh, and uh, we had uh, uh, round about 1000 people cheering us on the roads of pune we went to the blue shade to the blessings of uh, lord ganesha and then in the evening we had a party at jw mari where all our ex players uh, some of the key dignitaries of uh, the league and the federation were invited and of course our promoters and the full family of Puneri Paltan was there. Great, great. I think you guys had a blast. I've seen your social media. It's uh, full of partying and celebrating. I think you guys deserve it after a long season. You know, there was five to six months and if you look at, you know, the recap and everything, it's uh, like a hectic schedule and I think uh, you guys deserve it. Congratulations, Puneri Paltan. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, I wanted to take a step back and uh, give our viewers your professional and educational background. Yeah. so i graduated from uh, lala rajput rai okay and from uh, did uh, mba in marketing from there on my first job was with uh, fc bulka which is in your uh, office for premises <laughs> on the fourth floor working on brands like uh, tata motors and icici bank on break marketing and from there on i moved into a uh, kotak Kotak Securities, which is into stock market and arm of uh, Kotak Bank, and from there I was very lucky to get this opportunity from the Kotak family. Right. And did you did you have any interest in sports uh, prior uh, to this thing? Yeah, yeah, I've got a very interesting incident. So I always believed that I was a good cricketer. So one day I, you know, and Kotak has a very good cricket team. Okay, the bank team has a very good cricket team. They play. the bank shield which is by the rbi they have time shield and they also play a lot of uh, maidan cricket in uh, in mumbai and they have a very good team uh, let me tell you. so i thought i am a very good cricketer so they had a net selection uh, net uh, selection for the newcomers who are into kota so i i took my cricket kit went to shivaji park okay and uh, and the captain told me you pad up and go next so i went i thought Okay, I'll play a couple of shots, and I think I will be selected in the team. The first ball, I remember the bowler, Ritesh Sodan. He came in, he cut the ball, and I was clean bowled. <laughs> so okay, I said, okay. The captain said, okay, you continue. Second ball, another bowler came, and I got cotton bowled. He so said, he said, come out, and that's <laughs> how my cricket career ended in Kotak. <laughs> so and that's when I said, okay, okay. i will uh, i will again come back and uh, you know start my cricketing career and uh, i then went to uh, you know to the nets uh, did lot of efforts and then and then slowly slowly i again started my cricketing career but this was only for leisure not for any other purpose but for leisure with friends and uh, how did the opportunity came uh, to lead uh, to lead to any politics like what was it do you remember uh, what that day uh, getting a yes, phone or something like that i clearly remember okay uh, before uh, uh, before uh, getting into uh, kabaddi uh, kotak had a 25 year celebration and uh, uh, you know there was a core committee okay which i was a part of 
and our our uh, KRA was to conduct cricket tournament across the nation, uh, wherever Kotak had uh, their presence. And uh, we had a team of five people, and we successfully conducted uh, uh, this cricket tournament for internal Kotak employees across India. And uh, we did get a mention about this uh, from Uday Kotak that it was a very nicely conducted tournament. And I think when the opportunity came into for Kabaddi, uh, that's when uh, one of my bosses said that, why don't you join the team for Kabaddi? That is how it came about. That is how it came about. Right. And you've worked across a very structured uh, function at Kota and also you've led uh, the sporting arm. Uh, what is your experience and what are the differences that you observed? So, uh, in, in, in Kota, everything is, uh, is set. Okay, you have certain uh, certain structures and you've got to go by it. When, when I started uh, the sporting venture in short for sports, uh, every day is a new learning. And every day, uh, you know, there is a new challenges which come up. Okay. Uh, I, and there are, there are new things which are thrown at us, which we are not aware of. Because in, because in a manner, you have a large organization. You've got, you know, multiple departments. And you've got department heads and you've got colleagues, you know, where you can go and talk and discuss and then find a solution for your sticky situation. But here, you know, uh, you had you are all by yourself and everything was new. So it was very good learning. for. And you mentioned Inshokar Sports. I think Puneri Pantan is a company team, is one of the teams. I think you guys have much more at Inshore Sports. I wanted to give our viewers a background. What is Inshore Sports and what other teams are like? It? So Inshokar Sports is... Uh, is a sporting venture promoted by Suresh Kotak and family. Okay, we are into uh, different leagues. Uh, Puneri Paltan, which is a part of Pro Kabaddi League. We have uh, Puneri Paltan uh, table tennis team, which is part of Ultimate Table Tennis League, started by Vita Dhani and Neeraj Bajaj. Uh, and we also have the Amuse Grandmaster, which is a league started by Tech Mahindra and Fide. And what are your roles as a CEO? So, completely managing the PNL uh, brand uh, building and uh, the entire day-to-day -day operations of the team and the organization. Okay, and what is your best? Part? What is the best part about leading a sports group? There's uh, there's so much of fun, and you know you interact with athletes. You you get to know you know them inside out. You know you get to know about the challenges. You get to know the hardship, and when when you see an athlete really perform. You know, overcoming all those the day-to-day -day challenges, okay, it, it tells you how mentally uh, strong the athlete is and how fragile we are, okay. We talk about, you know, oh, we we, we keep complaining that, you know, okay, there's, a, there's so much of pain in my life, there's so much of, uh, you know, unhappiness. But if you if you look at, a, at an athlete, he overcomes all that and he's achieving every day new heights and new greatness. And that's what you, that, that's when you come to know that what is mental strength all about. And I'm sure uh, your schedule would be very packed uh, while uh, communicating with you regarding our recording. I've seen that your schedule is very hectic. Uh, how does your 24 hour look like during the season? So uh, early morning, we have our fitness regime uh, with the team. Okay. After the fitness regime, I sit with the coach. And understand what's happening along with the strength and training, and understand what's happening with each and every player. Okay, we, I know what are the goals that were defined to the athlete, and where is he on the scale of one to ten, and how far is he from achieving the set standards which we kept for the athlete. Then, then we also then decide ki what's going to be the evening. Uh, Right. This is the pre-camp. Mm -hmm. What's going to be planned for the evening? How the practice session is going to look like, and who are, who are the athletes who need to you know be given rest. And who are the athletes where we need to push and ensure that you know they uh, they come up the curve and you know start uh, uh, giving the required uh, output which the team requires for the league. In between, we also have a lot of content uh, which is getting created. So you know, interacting with the social media team, and then of course the very very big part of my time goes into nurturing sponsors and uh, you know getting uh, uh, sponsorships uh, activated for the organization and uh, what is it like in the auction room can you share your experience so uh, last couple of auctions have been very simple for us okay we just uh, have one player in mind and we go all out 
on that player. The last two options have been very simple for us. But yeah, otherwise, there's a lot of planning that goes on. We have uh, four or five different buckets where we, you know, we see that, you know, what kind of players do we want? What the, what kind of players are available? The names of the players for each and every different positions in Kabaddi. And we have at least four or five options for that position. And how do, you, how do you go about preparing for an auction? I'm sure there must be mock auctions that you must be doing your data analysis. Can you share some of the uh, opinions? Yeah, so we have a data analyst with us mm -hmm. okay, who, who, uh, who gives us the data of the previous season as well as the current standing of the player. So how has, has he been performing in the current uh, season in terms of nationals and then you have local Kabaddi tournaments. Okay, so uh, we, we then sit and decide, you know, what uh, players we've already retained and what are the positions that need to be filled. And uh, we have a, a value for uh, each and every player. And we, depending on on that value, we, on, on the auction table, we decide whether we need to break our purse over and above that price or should we go below the price or do we look at an alternate player. Mm -hmm. So it's very dynamic and it happens, uh, you know, do, some of the decisions are taken only at the auction table. And it also depends on what the other team is uh, doing with their purse. And which players are they buying? So. I think along with Kabaddi, uh, you have other teams as well in different sports. How did that come out? Like, how did you understand or what was the strategy like? Like, we have to go and get a team at uh, table tennis or a chess team. Like, what so, was it? so we don't uh, go, uh, you know, looking for teams. Okay, there are opportunities which come. Mm -hmm. We evaluate these opportunities, and uh, when we feel that okay, this is the right time to invest, we get into the sport. So that's how we look at the opportunity. In fact, we uh, we had an uh, an opportunity in IPL also. We did uh, go for a bid in that, but unfortunately, we didn't uh, get a team. No problem. Uh, how do you ensure that uh, the teams across sports get equal attention uh, throughout the year? I think uh, what happens is the PKL season or any other season. It's like a very defined period, four to five months. But I'm sure the the things going behind the scenes are 12 months. It moves around, around the year. How do you ensure that, you know, equal attention is given to all the teams of franchise? So, if you see all the three, all the three leagues, all, uh, all the teams, three teams you have in the three leagues, they have different uh, schedule. So, uh, so, when PKL comes, our entire focus then is on PKL because that's the major revenue driver for us and all our resources are on PKL. Uh, a good part is that uh, UTT comes in monsoon. So then again, we have uh, our same resources working on UTT. Similarly for uh, chess, uh, the chess uh, global chess league, it's a very short window of 14 days. So we pull in the same resources. So that's how we divide our time. So, you know, I would say 70% of the time goes on uh, Kabaddi, the 20% goes on UTT and 10% will go on global chess. And uh, I think the Pro Kabaddi League started in 2014 and we are in 2020. Four, but the league finished when it's like nine years. I'm sure across this period you've experienced a lot of ups and downs. I wanted to touch upon what are the challenges that you have observed across these years. So, uh, first, uh, when we started it, you know, uh, sponsors, which are very important for any sport, uh, to you know thrive. Okay, because uh, you know only if uh, the athletes get uh, the due uh, money for the kind of effort they put in, you know, will we get new athletes. So, sponsors. Sponsors was a very big challenge to, for the sport. Okay. Uh, then, getting new athletes. Because we were seeing that, you know, the same athletes are coming in. No new takers for the sport was there. That was the second challenge, to get new, new athletes into the sport. And uh, then, uh, getting uh, viewers, uh, you know, to watch the sport. Because any sport will take off if you get uh, viewers. So these were the three challenges, but over the years, I think uh, the league, the federation, and the franchise have worked together and ensured that they, you know, they they overcome these challenges. Yes, there are there are other challenges also, but uh, we are working in collaboration and ensuring that we pass each other. And what are the opportunities that you see? So going forward with the sport growing, okay, new uh, new sponsors are looking at uh, coming in. I think uh, we can look at a smaller league also now, okay, where, you know, we have 12 teams who, who are playing, but, you know, uh, after the league gets over, maybe a smaller team, a league could uh, uh, be looked into. 
uh, there are talks uh, between the federation and uh, Mashal that you know there is a women's uh, league which they are planning to do. So that could be an opportunity there. And I think you spoke about fans being the critical part, like fans come in, viewership come in. What are the strategies or what are the steps that Mary Fulton take to keep their fans engaged? Win the championship. <laughs> That's the best thing to do to keep your fans engaged. You keep winning, your uh, your fans get motivated. Okay, we've seen you know last two seasons that you know our team has been playing like champions. Okay, the boys have been performing very well on the mat, and the kind of response you get from the fans is is huge. Uh, and uh, we also do a lot of activation, be it you know campus, uh, you know going to large campuses like uh, Tech Mahindra, doing campus activation, taking our players there, doing meet and greet with our uh, players, with uh, you know some fans, a lot of contest which goes on to keep the fans engaged, and you know. Uh, also to uh, boost, uh, you know, new fans in. We do a lot of contests and mall activations, which we do. So all this and uh, uh, and taking the sport and uh, outside Pune, okay, into uh, places like Satara, Kolhapur, uh, Bid, Nanded, all the smaller towns of uh, Maharashtra to get more fans. I'm sure along with all of these, you must be touching upon social media being a big part of your marketing campaign. Uh, what do you think uh, is the role of social media in leveraging sports? I think social media for any anybody is uh, huge right now. I know any, anybody not being present on social media is missing out. So we we uh, we have uh, you know influencers. We have a proper strategy in for social media where uh, we not only have uh, you know. Uh, influencers who are helping us, but uh, there there are other uh, uh, activities which we do in terms of contest, in terms of creating new content with our players, in terms of creating new new videos. Okay, and uh, you know, and some of them are very f funny videos, you know, which which engage the when uh, they engage the fans, and then we try try to have a two way conversation. So some of the fans, okay, we we have uh, them promoted on our handles. They have got huge fan uh, following, our fans themselves. So, you know, taking their content and promoting it on our page. So, that's also, it's a collab collaborative effort which we do. And uh, what are the grassroots initiatives that are being taken in order to nurture young and upcoming talents? So, we have a youth academy called Yuva Paltan, okay, where we recruit uh, uh, good athletes uh, from across the country. Okay, they we give them a a uh, uh, monthly fee, a contract fee to you know uh, to be a part of the academy, and uh, we have a, a, a full time trainer who uh, takes care of the SMC. We have a physio with us. Okay, we have a tie up with a physio clinic, and they take care of their uh, you know injuries. And then we have a dedicated coach who comes in and you know be uh, be's with them and teaches them the skills. Uh, be it defense, be it offense, or you know match strategy, and then uh, during the year they go and play different different uh, matches across uh, Maharashtra and across India to see how, what the level of uh, their talent is, and that's how we then recruit them into our uh, Puneri Patan A team for the league. Right. So it's a structure where they play at the bottom level and then they rise as the performance. Yeah. Pitches and, and then they get. And also pitches. the league has a policy for get you know inducting new young players into the system. So that has also helped the policy, and that's why we believe in the youth academy. Right. So it, uh, some of our boys like Aslam, you know, on the Akash Shinde, Pankaj Moite are a product of uh, this uh, academy. Great, great, and all these players have played a huge part in uh, getting the trophy this season. Not only this season, but earlier also they have performed exceptionally well on the mat. Great. And sir, so wanted to touch upon what are the international expansion strategies that you are looking at. Is there any? So, uh, I'm sure the league and the federations are working on this, mm -hmm. okay, because that's a broader level for the sport and for Kabaddi, okay, and uh, that's best answered by the league and federations. So, and we will, of course, extend our support whenever, wherever, and whenever required, depending on, you know, what kind of commercials it. it talks about and then yes we will support it but it all depends on the league and the federation and uh, what is it in for brands like why do brands associate with sports and in specifically with kabaddi and how do you get them on board it's it's very very simple it's a rustic sport it's an indian sport 
it's a homegrown sport okay the kind of agility the kind of flexibility the kind of you know a power strength which is there in this sport i i know very few sport have it okay and it's a very fast sport okay in a 40 minute you know you are out or uh, you know you watch a match in 40 minutes you are done with it so where where do you get such a sport and which is so fast okay so for a brand okay who is looking into uh, getting into tier 2 and tier 3 cities okay this is the best uh, medium to reach out to audience okay and it's uh, it's, it's it also talks about the various attributes of a, of a, of a brand you talk about agility you talk about strength you talk about uh, flexibility you talk about pride the pride in winning uh, such a past game so it it goes well with some of the brands and their attributes great and i'm sure you along you have worked closely with other uh, brands and federations and associations in order to grow sports can you touch upon few examples that you have contributed or to leverage for in terms of if in this anything if you work with federation uh, to look at grassroots sport or any other examples you have in mind yeah so for the federation we work on uh, various things including uh, policies for you know, betterment of the league okay this is along with the league we work with the federation okay so certain changes which we are, which which are required for the betterment of the sport for the viewers for the fans that's what uh, you know we work with very closely with so some of the example is the uh, one of the example is the lobby room mm. okay, which is introduced in uh, um, pro kabaddi that uh, so that is thanks to the franchises and the league in collaboration with the federation saying that okay can we look at this rule being something like this to get the sport more exciting more exciting yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. and how do you go about scouting scouting when you look at kabaddi versus other sports how do you go about that so uh, uh, we have a scouting team in place okay ashok shinde uh, leads that team okay he is the one who is in uh, touch with various coaches across the country okay we we go to various tournaments in uh, in smaller cities okay where talent is there okay and then we shortlist a few of them okay and then we call them to our camp and then we take uh, trials based on our selections and if if we find that the athlete is good then we induct him into our uva patan academy and from there on his journey starts he's got to be with us for at least a year before he you know we can think of coming into puneri patan i think you've touched upon puneri patan the kabaddi team uh at a broader level i wanted to touch upon the other teams as well the uh, table tennis team and the chess team like what is your experience and like, just give a broad uh, view on the sport as well so table tennis is uh, catching up okay and uh, uh, you know the broadcaster uh, this time uh, geo has done a fantastic job on the sport okay this, this was the first season uh, with geo and i'm sure going forward uh, they will uh, uh showcase the sport much better okay and uh, in terms of the league uh, vita dani is very open to suggestions uh, from the franchises as well as from the broadcaster so i'm sure you know uh, you know we all working together to take the league to the next level great and now uh, how can you touch upon uh, the promoters like what was their mindset uh, in order to push uh, into sports so uh, Jay Kotak, uh, who leads this sporting venture for the Kotak family, is uh, very open to you know, you know uh, investing in sports, and he looks uh, looks at uh, sport with uh, a different uh, lens, okay? and he wants to promote uh, uh, you know homegrown sports or you know sports uh, uh, which are very uh, you know which has not got the due uh, over a period of time, and so he's looking very closely at that, and uh, thanks to him that you know. Uh, puneri paltan has seen you know what it is today from you know from being uh, at the bottom of the table in season 1 season 2 to performing consistently from season 3 onwards and to winning the championship so there's a lot of uh, attention to detailing uh, uh, thinking strategic thinking okay and this this i would uh, the entire strategic thinking part and from the long term plans uh, is all initiative of jay kotak and i thank him for it uh great i think uh, there is a lot of uh, our audience our people who are looking to get into the sports industry i want to touch upon what are the areas of employment that they can get into 
so uh, sport for apart from playing the sport okay there there are many other opportunities like you know, you know uh, uh, they could get into broadcast okay they could get into organizing sporting events and uh, their sport and sport is no more only a sport it's a sport of entertainment mm -hmm. so there are a lot of entertainment part in sports which they can get into okay there's a there's a role in, in terms of you know uh, sponsorships there's a role in terms of consulting you know if you if you have an idea you can you can consult uh, the federation you can consult the broadcaster you can consult uh, the league owners you know how to run a league or you know how how can the league get into the next level yes. then there there are other uh, touch points which you can you can do in terms of team man management so you can be a team manager okay you can be an operations head okay and the kind of business which is that with the hospitality is a very big business travel stay and uh, your training facilities so there are a lot of this and not to forget there's snc yeah. there's physio there's coaching so there's a lot of things which uh, you know opens up when you are into sport also i think there are people who are getting into the federations as well like running the league from at a government point of view so that is also a great opportunity for them. yes definitely definitely young people coming to federation always helps because young blood gives you new ideas and they've seen uh you know the sport growing so they have their own ideas and that also helps and what according to you are the steps that needs to be taken in order to grow sports from where is it where it is right now in india i think uh, first of all parents need to have an open mind okay they have to let the child play the sport okay okay and uh, stay away from coaching the child <laughs> okay i see i see many parents taking their children to you know play a sport and then instead of the coach uh, the mother or the father is trying to teach the child okay so be away from that okay let the let the child enjoy the sport first okay and uh, then you see how how he or she is picking up the sport and then uh, you go on from there and and have faith in your child if they are doing well i would say you know support them and i wanted to touch upon uh, the difference or cricket versus other sports in india and also give us the example that you gave before we started recording okay so so i i would say cricket uh, should be a supplement uh, and uh, you know uh, to other sports should uh, supplement cricket okay cricket uh, for us uh, you know if i if you talk about detailed business it's like an anchor tenant okay so uh, when when you when you have a mall you have uh, you have mcdonalds you have h&m okay that's that's where you know the crowd comes in for that okay and then you have exclusive outlets okay which are high end outlets okay where where the footfalls will be lower but the ticket size will be higher but what what happens with cricket is the cricket gets you or uh, to watch the ott to uh, to watch on uh, tv and to watch on screens and that's that's where the audience then gets hooked on and that's where you can promote other sports okay be it uh, be it uh, kabaddi be it wrestling be it badminton if you then start promoting the sport okay through cricket i think that will be uh, you know you can leverage it better because uh, the audience of uh, cricket is huge everyone in this country follows cricket so why don't we leverage on that mm -hmm. fact because once uh, once uh, your uh, the cricket season uh, uh, comes down that's when the other sports can get into but leveraging the current uh, viewers of cricket that's a great uh, point you mentioned i think we have enrolled sir who was a former ceo of varsity he also spoke on the similar point that we need to grow the size of the pie not get the share of cricket but we need to grow the entire pie so that uh, we can grow other sports along with cricket right exactly yeah, yeah. and sir uh, across your professional experience i'm sure you must have uh, come across incidents which are at a lighter note of funny incidents i want to do who share that if you have any yeah so i have many but <laughs> i'll tell you couple of things so once uh, once uh, you know the in a serious kabaddi match in this i'm talking about season 1 okay uh, one of my raider uh, touched the line okay and the referee gave the decision against us hmm. so from the audience okay i ran up to the technical table and i was ca ca causing a huge hue and cry at the technical table that's when uh, mr prasad rao okay very sweetly called me down okay and said uh, my friend 
in kabaddi you don't have to touch the line you got to cross the line the mid line okay and that's when i learned the okay kabaddi mein you got to cross the mid line and not touch it and from there on i then started learning the sport understanding the sport and from from there on you know i have i have great respect for mr prasad rao because he's taught me those fine fine nuances of the sport the technical aspects of the sport uh, yeah, that was one, one one funny moment and then then another incident okay uh, my captain of season 3 manjit chiller okay he he had a he had a he had a knee injury okay and he could barely walk and this was uh, two hours before the game okay and uh, we we uh, it, we had already qualified i think for the playoffs or something like that so it was it was not a very important game and uh, he could have rested so the promoter and myself met him one hour before the game and said hey manjit uh, you are injured i think so we i we think that you should rest this game so that you are prepared for the playoffs हाँ जी भाई हैं हाँ अकेला हाँ, भाई मैं रेस्ट करूंगा मैं नहीं खेलूंगा मैं दूसरे को खिलाऊंगा बात सुना तो वेरी गुड सो वी वेंट वी वेंट टू द स्टेडियम एंड वेन दे सेट कुनेरी पल्टन वी सी मंजीत चिलर टू हिज क्रेडिट ही टू फोर कैचेस दैट डे as a defender so that's when i that's when i tell told me an athlete is an athlete great great i think uh, we've covered a lot of things sir now it's time to take a step back and uh, work on the rapid fire we'll have a quick rapid fire okay 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 sir uh, are you ready for the rapid fire yes okay uh, one word to describe your journey in the sports industry great good Uh, what is your favorite sports documentary? On for the Aussie one, I don't remember the the uh, yeah, the yeah. Australian Australian one. Ah, uh-huh. the test series one. The test series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Edge. I the Edge. I think that was the web series for which I took the subscription of Amazon. Okay. Yeah. Your go-to sports app or website for the latest sports update? Right now, I go to Sports Kira. Okay. If you could switch careers for a day, what would you choose? I would choose uh, a marketer. Okay. Uh, what's your proudest professional achievement so far? Winning the championship. <laughs> One word to describe the future of sports in India? Humongous. Okay. Uh, if you could have dinner with any sports industry figure, living or dead, who would it be and why? It would be Maradona. Okay. Here, Maradona. Okay. Uh, what's the most memorable sporting event you attended in person? the icc uh, world cup uh, final which year in this year this year yeah. okay okay india australia okay uh, if you could bring any retired athlete out of retirement for one last game who would it be and in which sport the god of cricket sachin tendulkar uh best advice you've received as a ceo that you are very humble and down to <laughs> Okay, uh, so I think uh, we've reached uh, to the last part of the podcast. I want you to give uh, our viewers one advice that you have received, which helped you professionally, and one advice you want to give to someone who's uh, coming up in the industry. Yeah. So one advice was that you know, uh, which was given to me at the beginning of season one, when we came back from the auction, that you know, whatever, uh, whatever is the task, go well prepared. Okay, and do a Thorough, in-depth knowledge, you know, research on what you are going in for before getting into the task. That's one advice, and bef- without doing the research, don't go so far. And who gave this? This was given uh, by my ex-boss, Jaymit Doshi. And one advice you want to give to someone who's uh, coming up in the sports industry? That just enjoy the journey. Okay, and you'll you'll face a lot of you know roadblocks, face a lot of challenges. But once you made up your mind, just enjoy the journey. I think we had a fantastic time. We've covered everything that Puneri Palta and uh, has to offer. Uh, that is it uh, from our side. Hit the like button and the subscribe button, and keep watching Beyond the Field. Thank you. Thank you.